Hello. So for the past week, I've been trying to get into iOS hacking uh, and doing it in a way where I wouldn't really need a Mac. That's kind of like the default barrier to entry, right? You need a Mac so you can have Xcode and App Signer. Uh, but I think I've pretty much found a way where it can work entirely on Linux. I haven't tried it on Windows yet, but I would assume if you have Windows subsystem for Linux, it may work. Uh, if you feel so inclined to try that, let me know how it works out for you. So to get things started, we're going to uh, be jailbreaking our, our phone and we're going to be using the CheckRain jailbreak. And as you guys can see, it works on iPhones uh, 5S to iPhone X on iOS versions 12.0 and up. I'm currently using an iPhone 6 on iOS version 12.5.5, so I should be good. Uh, I'm just going to be downloading the ARM64 version because I'm currently SSH'd into a Raspberry Pi, but you should download whatever version is compatible with your architecture. And after we get jailbroken, we're going to be installing Cydia. Um, what CheckRain does for you is it uh, installs an app that allows you to then install uh, Cydia. And then we're going to be adding some sources to Cydia that are going to make it so that we can install uh, Frida and uh, AppSync Unified and Filza, which are then going to allow us to install unsigned apps. And right now we're just entering recovery mode. And then from there we're going to be following these instructions that are going to put us in DFU mode. We're just going to hold the home and the side button. And then we're just going to release the side button and continue holding the home button. And now we're in DFU mode. And now check range just installing the jailbreak. And that's how you know it worked. And just so we're clear here, you probably shouldn't be jailbreaking your main device. You, you should only really be doing this on uh, an iPhone that you don't particularly care about. And for that matter, you probably shouldn't be doing this on a public network. Okay. Uh, just give that a second to load. You should see that the check rain app pops up. So from here we can just install Cydia. Cydia. And from here, we're going to be installing uh, an app called Filza, which uh, is going to be what the actual app that um, that installs unsigned applications. But then we're going to have to add some sources so that it actually will work. Uh, or I'm just going to say upgrade essential. Probably isn't necessary for me to do it, but I'm just going to do it anyway. And just so you guys can get like a better understanding of what Cydia is, it's it's literally just the apt package manager. Uh, if you have ever used a Debian-based Linux distribution, you know that yeah, the, the package manager you're using is apt. Cydia is basically just apt. And if, even if you if you SSH into your phone after you have Cydia installed, you can literally just use the apt uh, command and manage packages that way. So. Installing Filza. And you can see Filza File Manager. All firm.
yolk. And here we're going to be adding some sources so that we can install uh, some apps that aren't... Oh wait, are they already there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, since I've already added them, it looks like Cydia is automatically loading them. Um, these are the two ones that we're trying to add. We're trying to add uh, this build.frida.re. And so what we would do is we would uh, you'd press edit, go to add, and yeah, here you would just type build.frida.re. Oh, well, if you could spell right. <laughs> uh, and then you'd be adding as well this uh, Cydia.akemi.ai source um, as well. So once you got those added, it's just, it's gonna update your sources, and from there you can install um, Frida. And what Frida is, uh, well, it's two things. Uh, on we're gonna be installing the Frida gadget, which is basically a server that is going to uh, be running on boot pretty much um, that you can then inject Java code from your main device into uh, and connect through USB to currently running processes like currently running apps and from there you can mess around with the uh, with the app that you are connected that you are injecting code into so I've just installed Frida and next thing I'm going to install is AppSync Unified. And this is only now available to us because we added the uh, Akemi source. Frida is uh, obviously only available to us now uh, because we added the build.frida.re source. And these two things aren't typically available. Uh, yeah, these things aren't, aren't available by default with Insidia, so that's why we have to add those sources. AppSync Unified is what's going to make it so that Filza can actually install unsigned um, uh, iOS apps. From here, we, uh, we got Filza right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to this GitHub page here. Let me see if we can make this clearer. You can see that we're going to be going to github.com slash pratik147 uh, dvia version 2 and we're just going to be downloading the ipa file right here and what this is this is the damn vulnerable ios app it's an intentionally vulnerable ios app that's for, for the purpose of learning I, uh, ba basic iOS app security. I'm just gonna, uh, I think I have to kill Apache. I could do, oh yeah, I'm already root. Uh, service Apache to stop. It's probably gonna hang, isn't it? Yeah, it's hanging. There we go. I'm just gonna start a Python server here and Safari. Download it. The uh, uh, DVIA app. And you can see now we have the option to open it in Filza. Uh, I already had one version. I'll just delete that one. And from here, it's gonna download it as a .zip file. You're gonna just have to rename it be a dot IPA and an IPA file it's the um, file format for iOS apps <laughs> and I IPA files literally they're just they're just a, a zip file of another name they're basically just zip files and now I'm just hit install. Well, that now that that's installed, we can um, well, we can see here that damn vulnerable iOS app, and 
on our main device what we're going to be doing is we're going to install two things we're going to install objection and then we're going to install Frida tools And Frida tools are the actual tools that are going to interact with the Frida gadget, the server that's now currently running on our iDevice. Objection is a, a tool that utilizes the Frida tools uh, in, so that you can have a more simple interface to mess around with the, with, with the app. And I'm just going to go to this demonstration here. And just so that we uh, can demonstrate what Frida is capable of doing, uh, one thing we can do is we can list all currently running processes on the phone um, by using the Frida PS tool. And we're going to add the uh, TAC U argument, which specifies that we're connecting to the iDevice through USB. And then we're going to add A for all applications. Uh, and then I for all installed applications. So basically we're going to be listing all installed applications. This is going to be a lot of output. So I'm just going to pipe it into less so that we can scroll up and down through it easily. And from here we can see all the uh, installed apps that we have, right? And this one is currently running, which is the DVIA. And we can see the process ID of it. And that's how we know that it's currently running because it has its own process ID. So from here, we're just going to copy the process ID and then we're going to be running objection and we're going to use the uh, G flag, which means that we're going to be connecting to the free to, ga the free to gadget and we're going to provide the process ID and we're going to say explore so that we can uh, mess around with the app. Here we go. We are now currently in objection and just to demonstrate that we can now mess around with the app, we can just make an alert window pop up like this. Pretty, pretty cool. That's already pretty satisfying, right? But what I wanted to demonstrate, um, just as a, a simple example of how we can enumerate potentially vulnerable strings that are in an iOS app, uh, we're going to be enumerating some plist files. And plist files, they're uh, configuration files uh, on on both Mac OS and I iOS, uh, you can kind of think about it as similar to a linux.conf file in a way. It's, uh, well, I would suggest you could also go to the iPhone dev wiki even, and you could do some research on, on plist files there as well, right? Should be able to. Anyway, um, yeah, we can use an example of a plist. Anyway, well, basically, um, so sometimes it's not super common, but sometimes developers will add potentially vulnerable strings within the plist files. Uh, you know, like um, an, an API key, for example, or a URL to a Firebase database. Uh, sometimes even user credentials and the thing is like an IPA file uh, it stores configuration files like plists and stuff it, it stores images that are utilized by the app and it stores uh, the, the, uh, the binary of the app which is written in like Objective-C or in Swift or something um, and yeah the, the, the plist file is basically what l l lets the uh, binary know the path, the paths to all the other files that are going to be utilized by the app. Um, and so just because there's kind of like a barrier to entry for getting access to a decrypted IPA file and, you know, all the files within the IPA file, sometimes devs would just, will just add sensitive strings in there. And so what we can do to get an idea of the IPA files that this app uses. In objection, we can just run env, right? Shows us the uh, environment that the, that the app uses. And from here, this one stands out to me. So I'm just going to uh, list it. And here we can see 
we have a plist file called user info. Now, what I'm going to do on the app is I'm going to add some random strings here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, enumerate that uh, user info.plist. Seem to have run into an error. Huh, that's interesting. Maybe I need to reconnect. Maybe I have to CD into it even. Oh, I didn't provide the full path. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's why. So what I can do instead of using providing full path is we can just CD into that directory, right? <laughs> and now we can just list it and we can see the user info.plist. I can now say we can cat it and we can see the strings that we provided, right? That's in the username password field, right? Um, so this is a fairly contrived example of a uh, plist storing uh, sensitive strings, but this is just to demonstrate that uh, we can, you know, A, inject uh, code into the currently running process to enumerate files within it by using Frida and objection. Uh, and B, that sometimes you may want to look through plist files. So, yeah, uh, hopefully we can get in some more advanced stuff with, um, with iOS hacking, but I'll do it for now. 